old and busted, new hotness. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Share this video with your friends and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really, really appreciate it. So what do you think of my new specs? I just, I've only had them about a week, I think. Um, and yet they're not as different um, appearance wise as I thought they were from the old glasses. Uh, these have black frames rather than silver or whatever those were. And the lenses are slightly, the, the frames are slightly more trapezoid shaped, I guess, than uh, than rectangular like the old ones. But uh, yeah, they're doing good. Um, it's nice to have clearer vision, although I'm still getting a little bit of a the optical illusion of desks and countertops and stuff sloping downwards toward my right. Uh, it's my first prescription in seven years, so I'm bound to have an adjustment period. So hopefully in the next few days, uh, things will be completely back to normal. But uh, anyway. So yes, uh, that's that's that, and uh, yes, on to the video today. Uh, yes, another John Williams update. Well, another, arguably. Uh, yes, it's only been in terms of my videos, you know, the number of videos, my video timeline, it's only been a few videos since my last John Williams update, but uh, calendar-wise, it's actually been almost four months since my last John Williams update, and I have added quite a few uh, items to my J-Dubs collection in those 16 weeks, uh, certainly more than I had expected to. Uh, you see, it all started when I saw that I was only missing two of the soundtracks he's put out since the year 2000. So once I got those two, I realized I was only five soundtracks short of having every one of his scores since 1978. So why not, right? Especially since his 1990s titles, which were all five of the ones that I was missing are almost always the cheapest and easiest to find in his discography. Throw in a few random finds, a can't-miss bargain or two, and a couple of newly released titles, and here we are at a supersized John Williams collection update. Now, one big reason I've been able to add this many titles to my collection is because I was able to get many of them for around half of what they typically go for now, uh, thanks in large part to Lucas over at fsmcds.com, which I mentioned in my haul video last week. So let's go ahead and get started on the uh, showing you the collection update here. I'm kind of going to go in groups, sort of. Um, first, a couple of compilations. Yeah, the, mainly the compilations. And then the ones that I've picked up uh, in chronological order of, you know, when the soundtracks, when the movies were, were, released, eh, were released. And then a couple of box sets that I was able to pick up. So first off, I have the one and only vinyl find. Looky this. Uh, yes, E.T. the Extraterrestrial in the, an audiophile version. It sounds beautiful. There is a little bit of uh, static, a little bit of popping and crackling, but uh, it was only $17 at House of Records. And, uh, you know, I honestly expect a little uh, imperfection in the sound quality of vinyl. I'm not a super vinyl snob or something. It's an analog format, so I'm expecting some analog noise here and there. But anyway, yes. I had to pick it up, uh, especially when it's the audiophile format, one of my all-time favorite John Williams scores. Very happy to have that finally on LP. And here we have a couple of... Uh, uh, these first couple of compilations is just part John Williams. Uh, first, we have one from Varez Saraband. This one I got uh, uh, as one of the FSM CDs sales. This was only like 3 or $4. Uh, yes, it uh, features The Prince and the Pauper by uh, Eric Wolfgang Korngold, but it's got... Um, uh, several other movies from, as you can see here, the uh, comp uh, composers John Williams, Alex North, Miklos Roja, Georges Delarue, and William Walton. And uh, yes, the two John Williams titles here are A Suite from the Reavers, the uh, 1969 movie, I think it was, and uh, A Suite from Jane Eyre. So uh, yeah, and, and that was track one and track three. There's no other John Williams on the CD, so I would have thought, you know, in terms of spacing everybody's contributions out evenly, I would have expected them to be further apart in the track list, but that's just me. That's how I would have assembled the track list anyway. But they didn't consult me, so what can you do? But yes, this has uh, The Constant Nymph, Between Two Worlds, The Lost Weekend, uh, Prince and the Pauper, obviously, the title, um, Henry V, 
uh, Cleopatra, the love theme from Cleopatra by Alex North, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. So yes, a bunch of classic films uh, on that compilation. It's a very nice compilation. Oh, it's actually um, performed by the National Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Charles Gerhardt. Now, Charles Gerhardt has put out, um, or he conducted, um, albums of, you know, re-recordings of the three movies in the original Star Wars trilogy. I've been wanting to get my hands on those. Haven't yet. Uh, one of these days I will eventually. Now, this second find, this is about half John Williams. And uh, it's actually a two-disc set. It was originally in two individual jewel cases, but I put them in one jewel case, and I actually did this cover art for it. Kind of a much more impressive cover art than the original set, I, I have to admit, if I do say so myself. Anyway, it's called Space Wars. It is supposedly performed by the Starlight Orchestra, but it is clearly, when you listen to it, it is clearly from several different sources. Uh, some of it is a very, very small pop. You can tell very, very small pop orchestras. Some uh, There was one or two that are seen like synthesizers, you know, just kind of synthesized orchestras. Orchestras, I use that term lightly. And uh, there's a couple of, uh, of decent-sized orchestras, but the recording quality is not great. So yes, this is kind of a very scattershot compilation. I only paid a few bucks for it um, in a job lot on eBay with a couple other things. Uh, one of which you'll see here, maybe? I can't remember. No, I don't think so. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's okay. You know, it's John Williams. What the heck? Now, this next one is actually a re-recording. And yes, it was in originally in a two-disc jewel case, but I uh, compacted it to one disc. Yes, it is a re-recording of Superman the Movie. Uh, this is the cover of the booklet. Uh, I don't have the uh, cover of the... So the cover of the slipcase looks kind of like this, but yes, as you can see, it is conducted by John, Deb John Debney and performed by the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. This was, for a while, the most complete recording of the Superman score. Uh, it's two discs, and uh, yes, this was until uh, Rhino Records put out the uh, a full two-disc set of the original score. Uh, and then, of course, it was superseded later on by uh, much better quality restorations of... Uh, the score. So yeah, very nice little find there. One of my favorite scores again, so I couldn't, couldn't not have the re-recording. Um, yeah. And then this was from FSM CDs. It was only like $8 for that. And it was great in great condition. And here we have, I can't remember. I think I saw this on Amazon and I decided to pick it up. It is a, sorry about the glare from the camera there. Um, Patrick Leeson, Star Wars. This is, um, rearrangements and performances of music from the Star Wars, uh, the original Star Wars movie, by uh, synthesizer pioneer Patrick Gleason. Interesting stuff. Kind of fun to listen to, I have to say. Um, <laughs> kind of get a load of the cover art there. and uh, But yeah, it's uh, kind of cool. You know, some of, the, uh, some of the tracks are very, very close to the original um, compositions. Some of them uh, kind of veer off uh, into improv and, uh, you know, interludes and stuff that are a little bit removed from John Williams. So in that respect, it's kind of an interesting listen. So had to pick that up. Uh, now here we have a couple of uh, non-film score compositions by John Williams. This again was from FSM CDs, and it was $25, but uh, I'd kind of been wanting to have it for a while. It is the original violin concerto and flute concerto written by John Williams. Um performed by the London Symphony Orchestra, com, uh, perform, uh, com, conducted by Leonard Slatkin. Yes, uh, good stuff. Um, yes, uh, a little bit on the experimental side in terms of uh, the compositions of the stuff. So, uh, yeah, kind of, uh, kind of cool to listen to. Sorry, just adjusting my, uh, my notes here. Uh, and then we have a much more recent composition, uh, John Williams' second violin concerto, uh, performed, uh, the spotlight musician is Anna Sophie Mutter, who performed with him on his Across the Stars, uh, a collection of film themes, and this also includes a few other film uh, themes of John Williams, but the featured piece is, of course, the uh, violin concerto, performed by the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and uh, this also includes uh, the theme from The Long Goodbye, as well as Han Solo and the Princess from The Empire Strikes Back, and Marion's theme from Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, 
This, I, uh, this was one I just picked up last week. I decided I had to pick it up. And then uh, another very recent release is John Williams in Tokyo. This is another uh, Deutsche Grammophon uh, presentation, kind of a, a sequel to his two European concerts from a couple of years ago. Uh, nice stuff. And I could have gotten the two disc. They also have they have a two disc and I think also a three disc, which is two CDs and a DVD or Blu-ray. But I decided to opt just for the single disc presentation uh, since he, he doesn't really bring anything new to the program. It's, you know, the same old compositions that he did in the uh, Berlin and Vienna albums. So I decided to kind of scale back. You know, I've got the more expansive editions of those other two. So, and this is uh, another very recent acquisition. I picked this up at the same time I got the Violin Concerto Number no. 2. Had my eye on this for a while. Uh, spotlight on John Williams from the City Light Symphony Orchestra from Lucerne, Switzerland. And yes, it's a two-disc set. Uh, hopefully you can read it. don't know why that light is reflecting so intensely. It's not any brighter than I usually have it. But uh, yes, a uh, nice bunch of stuff. And the reason I picked this up is because it has perhaps the best recording I've ever heard of the Cowboys Overture, which is track one on this set. I streamed that and I thought, okay, yeah, I've got to get this one. I had my eye on that one back uh, last fall, last winter, when I was assembling my John Williams collection. Uh, but finally took the, uh, pulled the trigger on that one. And this one, okay, yeah, this one came with that Space Wars compilation I showed you a few minutes ago in the same eBay lot. Greatest Action Hits by John Williams, performed by the London Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Roy Budd. Uh, yes, a nice uh, collection of stuff, and it's got... Uh, Indiana Jones suite, an E.T. suite, a Superman suite, and a Star Wars suite. So, yeah, good stuff. And this is also one that I kind of had uh, my eye on back last fall, but never picked up. So, yes, these two, or I guess three CDs, with Space Wars being a two-disc set, and three other non-soundtrack uh, CDs, like eight bu uh, six bucks plus shipping. So Now we're getting into the actual soundtracks of his... Um, that I've recently recently acquired. Here we have Checkmate. This is an FSM uh, Film Score Monthly release. Uh, Checkmate was a uh, spy intrigue type uh, TV series he did back in the 60s. And this is actually coupled with an album of um, conducted by John Williams of uh, classic songs, pop songs and stuff. Kind of like the easy listening stuff that was popular back in the 60s. So yes, very cool. Uh, oh yeah, and actually the cover of the Rhythm in Motion album is there on the inside cover. And then we have not one but two uh, releases for the movie Not With My Wife You Don't. Uh, one of the, obviously one of the sex comedies from the 60s that Johnny Williams did. And this one is the original soundtrack recording coupled with another um, uh, soundtrack by George Dunning for the movie Any Wednesday. And then a couple of years later, uh, Film Score Monthly released the actual score recordings of Not With My Wife You Don't. And this is actually all on its own CD. So yes, a very much more expanded collection. Uh, back when they did the original album, the arrangements and stuff were done specifically for the album. They weren't uh, as they were heard in the movie. This is the score from the movie itself. So, And then this next one was kind of a grail for us John Williams aficionados it had not. It had gone unreleased for many, many, many years, fifty years, and they uh, La La Land finally was able to secure the Sugarland Express for release. It was just released a couple of months ago. Um, an excellent album, and for a while we thought that it was just because he didn't like the score or he didn't feel it was worthy of an album, but not because of the quality. Uh, he didn't want it. He felt it wasn't worthy of release because of the length of the score, but it's it's about forty minutes. Uh, yeah, 40 minutes and 31 seconds. So, so yes, finally, after all these years, that uh, key soundtrack, the first, his first collaboration with Steven Spielberg. It took it 50 years for it to see the light of day, which is pretty awesome. Now, uh, this next one you saw in in my haul video last week, uh, JFK. Got, a, got that in a seven CD purchase from Discogs. Then we have, uh, this was also from an S FSM purchase, uh, Home Alone 2. The original score. There is uh, there are a couple of expanded editions um, that uh, 
are out there, but they are very, very, very expensive. This this one was only twenty twenty five dollars, I think. So, to me, it was worth that to have the basic version. Then we have Nixon, uh, his Oliver Stone Oliver Stone movie. Very nice to have that. Night. It's so nice to fill in all these gaps, you know. And we have Sleepers, the nineteen ninety five movie. Very intense subject matter for this movie. I actually saw it. Um, it's worth seeing, I think, but just be prepared prepared for some uh, pretty intense subject matter. And then we have The Lost World, the two-disc La La Land um, presentation. Nice to have that. This was one of the first ones I picked up after my John Williams Week videos. So it's one of the ones I've been waiting the longest to show you guys. And then we have the BFG, uh, one of his most recent Spielberg uh, collaborations. So, very nice little score there. And then The Post, another recent Spielberg. So, yeah, I now have, I think, all the soundtracks from all of his Steven Spielberg films. So. And then I got, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a few uh, upgrades from one disc editions that I used to have, I decided to, uh, the opportunity struck and I was able to pick up a couple of uh, extended versions. This one, yeah, I think I just got this one from La La Land uh, directly, still available. Uh, Amistad, the two disc version, uh, upgraded that from the one disc original release. Very nice to have that. This one was actually on sale on eBay because only because the case was damaged and it was about half of what I would normally pay for the Fury. I've got this on LP, the original version on LP, but I figured you know, for less than half of what it goes for now, go ahead and uh, add it to the uh, my collection of expanded John Williams scores. And this one, I picked this one up because when La La Land released the Sugarland Express, they had a sale going on for the rest of that month for uh, all. Uh, Steven Spielberg, John Williams scores. And this one was uh, still available. They had AI, Artificial Intelligence, the three CD version in the chubby case. So yes, and this one was $30. And normally, uh, for, normally, normally $40. So it was $30, I think. So yeah, very much worth it. I'm going to take a drink for a second. Hang on. <clears throat> Should have brought that tray back into uh, more into reach before I reach for my, for my drink. Anyway, now the final two items in my haul this week. I'm actually going through this faster than I thought I would. Got a couple of box sets here, <clears throat> both from La La Land, and I again I was able to get both of them for right around original retail price, and they are both actually I think on the La La Land website both of these are temporarily out of stock, but they've been that way for months and months and months. So I don't know, you know, usually when something is not being, is not going to be reissued again, it says sold out or no longer available. So maybe we will see uh, more runs of these in the future, but uh, for now they are going for at least twice of the original retail price. And, uh, but I was able to find them. This one I found on, was it Discogs or eBay? I can't remember. I think it was Discogs. But uh, yes, it was. I wasn't. This one is not one that I was clamoring for, but when I saw the opportunity, had to pick it up. The Disaster Movie Soundtrack Collection. Uh, yes, it, the Poseidon Adventure, the Towering Inferno, and Earthquake. Uh, I have, or I had Earthquake. I actually have Earthquake on vinyl, the original edition, as well as on um, the Legend box set, the original version. But I decided, you know, what the heck? And I, I have. Or did I have? I used to have an, a shorter version of the Poseidon Adventure, uh, but and I'd never had the Towering Inferno. But uh, yes, had to get those, all three of them, and the uh, yes, Earthquake and uh, the Poseidon Adventure are both one disc presentations. But the Towering Inferno is actually a two disc set. Uh, so yes, I'll show, I'll show the backs of these. Uh, here's, yeah, two discs, uh, expanded, uh, remastered, restored score from Towering Inferno. 
and uh, Poseidon Adventure is the one a, a one disc presentation. All three of these are remastered and expanded from previous releases. Very nice to have. And again, we have Earthquake. Very, very cool to have all these. And of course, each one comes with its own booklet, um, talking about the score and its creation and all that good stuff. And uh, yes, I was very, very happy to have all three. Get all three of these for uh, $70, $75 postage paid. And that's what it uh, its original price is on La La Land's website. But this next one, this is one of the ones I was just absolutely deliriously happy to have. I didn't know how much I wanted it until I had it. And this was uh, another thing that I bought off of fsmcds.com. $125. Uh, the original retail price is $105. So I got it for just a little bit more than retail. Get ready for this. The Harry Potter John Williams Soundtrack Collection. A 7-CD box set of uh, the, film, the scores from uh, Sorcerer's Stone, uh, Chamber of Secrets, and Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's just amazing. Um, I just love the scores for these movies uh, more so than I realized I enjoyed them. It was nice to have the uh, one disc original versions, but uh, what can I say? And here I got to show you the presentation of La La Land's releases is just outstanding. You're getting so much more than just the CDs, just the music. Uh, here we have uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Look at that cover image. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, it is, this is a three disc presentation with uh, the original score, of course, over the first two discs and plenty of extras. All three of these have gobs of extra uh, music on here. And uh, I love this picture. Don't you just love it? This is a beautiful, beautiful picture uh, with uh, Harry and Hagrid with uh, Hogwarts in the background. Very cute. Very cool. And yes, each one of these comes with, trying not to... Uh, just in case the CDs want to escape their hubs. But yes, each one of these comes with its own booklet, a, a lush booklet, talking about the uh, creation of the score and uh, all that good stuff. Lots of photos, too. And uh, so yes, that's uh, Sorcerer's Stone. I'm trying to put these so that they don't uh, drop. And then uh, the Chamber of Secrets is a two-disc presentation. Again, with a booklet, a uh, sumptuous booklet, uh, highlighting the score. And uh, Prisoner of Azkaban is also a two-disc uh, presentation. Uh, yes, the track lists are just so enormous that they couldn't just put the track lists on the back. And now, and again, with its own booklet. And as if that weren't enough, all three of the individual titles have their own booklet. There is also a book booklet with the set. Uh, you know, So yeah, you get four booklets with all this music. And uh, this, again, more talks more about the release of the movie. And uh, what this one have that the, has that the other booklets don't have is the full track listings of each of the... And I don't know why they weren't put in the in individual CD. Uh, things. Let me see if I can find it here. So yeah, you can see it has full track listings. So I don't know why the track listings weren't included in the individual booklets rather than in the other one, but that is just a nitpick. But yes, the CDs were absolutely like new, spotless. Uh, as you can see, the box was in absolutely pristine condition, $125. Um, I was just absolutely floored, ecstatic. I kind of still can't believe that I've got that set. And the uh, best part is... Uh, I bought it on the aftermarket, so you know who didn't get a penny for it. I have some, uh, you know, uh, con concerns about uh, J.K. Rowling, which I won't go to into on this video. But anyway, yes, that is my John Williams update. Um, <clears throat> and yes, uh, I was kind of impressed when I realized that I'm only missing about 12 of his scores until I can see that I have a complete collection. Uh, but a couple of them are very, very pricey, uh, $100 plus, but they might be with you, within reach by Christmas time. I'm going to have some uh, 
hopefully have some credits of varying sources, so which might help me finance purchase of those two uh, sets. And uh, the rest of them, though, are titles that I'm not really interested in. Many of them are very brief scores, 30 minutes or less, and a lot of those uh, share the disc with another score by a different composer. Not that that's a detraction of any sort, uh, but just, you know, just the length of the uh, those scores, you know. Uh, nearly all of them are going for more than I'm ready to pay for the amount of music that they have, the amount of John Williams music that they have. Uh, and the only temptation with them is because I'm so close to having a complete collection. Um, bearing in mind that, to me, complete requires having just one version of each score, not necessarily every version of the score. Some people are hardcore collectors, and they will have every single uh, iteration of John Williams soundtracks, every release. Um, the ones that I have are usually the most complete, but not always. Sometimes I make do with, I'm just totally happy with the original version. Uh, there are a few out there that I already have the one-disc editions of, but I'd like to eventually upgrade to two-disc versions. Uh, so I'm always scanning eBay and Discogs for those, although a few of them are um, still available at retail from the original labels. So yeah, I, I actually got one. Oh, I forgot to show that one. Hang on a sec. So yes, uh, we have Tom Sawyer. Yes, this uh, I actually just got this in the mail the other day. Uh, it came from Canada from Discogs, and again, for almost half the price of uh, what it's going for now. And uh, yes, Tom Sawyer was a musical adaptation from 1973 of the classic uh, Mark Twain tale, arranged and conducted by John Williams. The songs are written by someone else, and it's uh, accompanied by the score from Huckleberry Finn, the sequel uh, movie, which was not uh, did not involve John Williams at all. So yes, uh, yeah, two scores in one, only one of them John Williams. But anyway, yes, uh, sorry, I didn't have that one on hand to show you while I was, you know, in line with the rest of my collection. But uh, anyway, and yes, there is one uh, more CD on its way. Uh, it's actually a new release due out later this month. It's that John Williams Reimagined. It's got, uh, you know, uh, rearrangements of his stuff in small combo uh, format. So very much looking forward to that one. So this may not be my last John Williams update, uh, but it may be a while before my next one. Uh, but anyway... That'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch my future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.